Councilman Ricky Burgess, um, first of all, thank you for uh, thank you for the offer of the guided tour. I really, really appreciate this time. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, the NRA is holding its convention here in Pittsburgh for the, I think it's the second time in the last 10 years they've done that. They were here in 2004, again, about 70,000 people at this convention center downtown. Tell me about your, your district, District 9 in Pittsburgh and its relationship to downtown, the differences, similarities, how they're connected. Um, I represent the eastern part of the city of Pittsburgh. I represent the poorest area of the city of Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, the most crime infested, the most homicides, the most drug infested area in the city of Pittsburgh, the lowest um, economic standards. Um, and it is um, unfortunately a very difficult place. It is a place that has been plagued by violence, uh, by gun violence. I myself, in fact, my whole life has been the consequence of gun violence. My aunt was murdered and my mother had a nervous breakdown and for 30 years had a mental illness that she never recovered from. Um, my cousins have been shot and killed. My wife's father was shot. My wife's mother, my mother-in-law was shot and killed who lived with us. Her brother um, killed someone who had spent 20 years in the penitentiary. I've adopted his son and have raised him as my own son. I actually went into ministry after my mother's sickness to kind of figure out this thing. So all of my life has been really affected with violence. My wife's cousins have been shot and killed. I've had children in my church shot and killed. Um, I ran for council, in fact, because I just couldn't take the shootings anymore. The ease in which you can buy guns in this community is frightening. You can buy a gun from a gas station. I mean, why does individual citizens need M uh, AK-47s, M-16s, AR-14s, three and four of them? You know, there's no gun manufacturers in my community. These guns are not being made there. They're being brought here through straw purchasers, through gun shows. And it just, it's, it's, it's turned my community into either a combination of the old Wild West or a ghost town. It's killed the businesses. It's killed the residential community. Um, the area I represent has lost almost 75% of its population since 1968. It's just been devastating. And almost all of it leads directly or indirectly to gun violence. What options do you have to try to reduce gun violence? That makes it even sadder. It's because of the hold the NRA has on our state legislature that we, we, we're prohibited from passing any responsible gun ownership laws. When we fight nationwide about, the, um, about gun laws, one of the things that's commonly observed is that the cities really have different needs than rural areas, but the state legislation, uh, state law in, in Pennsylvania says you can't have a specific law in Pittsburgh that doesn't apply to the rest of the state. You can't solve your own city-based problems. All the laws have to be uniform for the whole state. Yeah, I think as I think with Mayor Bloomberg said that um, when you hear the word duck in a rural community, you're talking about waterfowl and hunting. But when you hear the word duck in an urban community, you're talking about getting down and um, being safe. I have I have in my community, I have mothers who have children, they have their children sleeping in the bathtubs. I have mothers who have their children playing in basements, won't let them out on the streets because of the gun violence. Now, certainly, the urban part of Pittsburgh is completely different than the rural communities in the middle of Pennsylvania. And we absolutely need common sense gun laws because of the gun shows and the lax laws we have in Pennsylvania. Um, it's just a, it's a crime, it should be a crime for the way guns are flowing in the communities where, where I represent. And you see that as the influence of the NRA on the state legislature? Oh, absolutely. They right. control the state legislature. That's why there's no, there's no, there's no responsible handgun uh, legislation passed in Pennsylvania. Uh, and I, I wish the NRA was having their convention in Homewood um, so they could see firsthand the effect of their, um, of their lobbying on my community. In many ways, they have their lobbying has already sentenced my community to a death sentence. What do you think would work that could be enforceable, that you could imagine uh, not only being a, sm a, a smart policy in terms of its goals, but actually being enforceable in terms of local law enforcement? Well, I don't see any need to have assault rifles in the city of Pittsburgh. There is no way um, I would ever uh, allow there to be uh, assault rifles. That's number one. That that has to go. One of the three Pittsburgh police officers were killed a couple of years ago 
by a mentally ill man with uh, with assault rifle. Certainly, there has to be stronger background checks for people who do have guns. Um, and third of all, I would eliminate um, any guns coming in this community from gun shows and things like that. Now, whether that's enforceable, that's a different question. But certainly, um, we need to find a way to remove the guns off the streets. We have no statewide lost and stolen handgun uh, prohibition. So a straw purchaser can buy a myriad of guns, sell them illegally, and then they're on the streets and there's no way of tracing it back to the original owner. Let me, let me make sure that I understand that, Rex. I've been reading about that because I know that's one of the one of the things Pittsburgh has tried, right? So if I'm a straw purchaser, I'm legally allowed to buy guns, but I'm not buying them for myself. I'm buying them in my name and then giving them to somebody, giving them to other people and they're being used in crimes. That's exactly right. When the weapon gets traced back to me because I am the owner of record, I say, I, don't know, I lost it. I lost it. Don't know what happened to it. So the lost and stolen gun registry would say that it would require you to right. notify law enforcement if, in fact, you did have a lost or stolen weapon as soon as you realized it was gone. That's exactly right. Closes the loophole. That's right. Right. Pittsburgh tried to do that locally as a city. Right. And it's never been enforced because it can't be enforced because we're prohibited from enforcing that kind of law by the state legislature, period. All right. We're coming into Homewood now. And as soon as you come in, Red Trussell were going to come past right now. Um, a woman and her sister were walking home from the library. Two young men, 15 and 16, shot and killed her um, on her way home from the library on the left-hand side of the street as soon as we come into the entrance. Was the motive sure. robbery? Was they no, they were aiming at somebody else. They were aiming at, they saw a guy at the gas station. They were trying to shoot him on his way leaving. And uh, Cheryl Essing. Esney, and they, they shot and shot and killed her. We're going toward the business district where there's been so many shootings that it has eliminated the business district. Are there any significant employers in Homewood at all? No. No significant business? No. There's some mom and pop stores, gas stations, um, and some nonprofits, but no significant employment. Of course, we have our funeral homes are doing great business, unfortunately. And most Italians are not business, they're not drug trade. They're killing each other over rep, over girls, over um, colors, mostly not colors, over territory, over streets, um, mostly silly killings. And, um, that are, and those are the sort of things that would that might result in violence in a different circumstance, but maybe not death, right. except Fighting, for the prevalence right. of guns. Uh, guns. If you have guns on the street, then instead a fist fight turns into a shooting. We have guns on the street, um, hard feelings, in a moment turns into shootings because it's instant in a moment. Is there an expectation among young men from this neighborhood that they will be armed? On the street do people expect if you are a man of a certain age that you will have a weapon on you? Um, most of the young boys, if they don't have a weapon on them, we think they do. This is Kazuki's Chicken and Waffles place right here. Um, this was um, a thriving business. Um, when um, two gunmen, three masked gunmen came in and shot um, a young girl and a young man in a wheelchair, killed them in the, that business right there. Um, it's never been opened since the shooting. Um, um, and he, uh, Coles, her, young Coles, her um, uncle and daughter members of my church, she, she died. It was sad. Same thing with this, this, this restaurant that just closed here was a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm -hmm. Um, up until about uh, two years ago. Um, a, another business just bought it and just closed it. Um, but right here in the drive-thru, um, a 15-year-old boy was shot and killed right here in the drive-thru. And when he was shot and killed here in the drive-thru, they closed the KFC. Um, and then there was a family dollar next door that was about to open. They had put in the family dollar name up. They had bought, built a brand new building for the family dollar. When the young boy was shot in this driveway, family dollar pulled out of the adventure, took the sign off, and the building's been vacant ever since. And those business owners are closing those places because they believe that customers will not come here because it's too scary. Well, they believe that not only whether customers come or not, they feel that the employees are in danger, and, 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 okay, they have a reason for it, because just a few years before this, we had a drugstore in Homewood. The manager of the drugstore, which I'll take you past, was making a night deposit, um, no, a day deposit, and they, um, they picked him up, they robbed him, they killed him, and, um, and then the drugstore closed, yeah. and so we lost our only drugstore. I'll take you 
past the Rite Aid, well, it was formerly right at that, you know, it was a subway at one point. Um, it's just sad. I mean, when I grew up, every vacant lot you see was a business, was this, this had two bakeries, grocery store. This was our business district. Now it's just empty. It's just nothing here. All the stores are closed. The beauty salons are closed. The stores are closed. This is the Rite Aid where they killed the, um, the manager of the store. When they killed the manager of the store, the company, even though they had a long-term lease, closed the building and it stayed like this ever since. What would it take to get business back to Homewood? Um, you got to stop the shootings. You have to you have to stop the shootings. I mean, you can't have these kind of shootings in in broad daylight. You can't have these kind of executions and expect businesses to invest. They're just not going to. Um, this is the community college, the local branch of the community college, uh, the only really one in an African American community, um, west of Philadelphia. And I, I, t I teach there, I teach class there. Is this is this community college an anchor here? It's is one of the anchors, one of the anchors for the young people. Um, but of course, some some students won't come there because of where it's at. When my member's son was shot 11 times, I heard the shots on my porch. I was sitting on the porch, I heard the shots. I didn't realize it was him, but I heard the shots on my porch. I could hear them. And I mean, I hear the shots at night. I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable. And it's, no one should have to live this way. No one should have to live this way. And the only reason that people will say that it's okay to have these guns is because they don't live where I live and they don't experience what I've experienced. You know, they've not seen their family members shot. They have not seen it. If you see it once or twice, uh, it'll change your life forever. If you could talk to um, the big wigs at the NRA to explain to them the connection between what they're doing downtown at the convention center right now and what has happened here in your community, how would you put it to them? I have watched people who I love, my own family, my immediate family. My mother-in-law lived with me when she died and was shot. I've watched them walk out the door and not come home. I've seen kids that grew up in my church who I baptized, who I taught, who I tutored, who ate candy and pizza with me in my youth groups. I've had to do their funerals, watch them shot. I've watched young kids, you know, 15, 16 years old who could not, couldn't fight that saved their life, become expert shooters and killers. These guns are killing people. There's no hunting here. We're not hunting deer. There's no quail here. There's no buffalo here. We're not hunting uh, rabbits and, and raccoons here. These guns are killing people who I love. What would you do if the guns were killing the people that you loved? Would you let them continue? Would you have, tell me how many people in your family have been shot and killed by guns. And maybe if, if you lost four or five family members through gun violence, maybe that you would see it from my position. But for them, it's fun. But for me, it's life and death. Is there a way that what you think needs to happen in your community and what they think needs to happen in terms of preserving the right to bear arms as American citizens? Can those two things happen together? I think so. I, didn't, I, I guess um, I believe that you can have responsible gun laws without prohibiting guns um, altogether. I actually challenged the local uh, NRA representative here to a debate mm -hmm. on, the, on television that we actually debated. And, um, and I told him, I believe the Constitution does give us a right to bear arms, but tell me where it says we have a right to pack an AK-47. Show me where it says we have a right to have an M-16, that we can have a submachine guns walking down an urban neighborhood. Um, no. Um, responsible handgun ownership means certain, certain guns should not be on the street, period. Not in an urban community. Um, and second of all, I think that there should be uh, strict laws to uh, responsible law so that the can gun owner has the gun, maintains the gun, and is qualified to have the gun. That, you know, you don't want mentally ill people, you don't want people with criminal backgrounds, none of them should have guns. I mean, let's, let's be honest. We know these are common sense. Every day, 90% of people you talk to probably would agree with it. But um, I believe their interest is more political than, in, well, their interest is not the lives of these people. Let me put it that way. This is my interest, it's these lives. Because these are the lives that I have, I, I have in my hands.